Good morning. Welcome to St. Charles. As we welcome more people to our liturgy, please be sure that the longer pews are being fully utilized and in that way help other people to be able to find appropriate seating. Let us offer together our prayer for a better understanding of true stewardship in our lives and here in our parish. Lord God, you alone are the source of every good gift of the vast array of our universe and the mystery of each human life. We praise you and we thank you for your great power and your tender faithful love. Everything we are and everything we have is your gift. And after having created us, you have given us into the keeping of your son, Jesus Christ. In the name and spirit of Jesus, we commit ourselves to be good stewards of the gifts entrusted to us, to share our time, our talent, our material gifts as an outward sign of the treasure we hold in Jesus. Amen. Our presider will be Father Rogers. Please stand for our entrance hymn. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. 
It will not be like the covenant I made with the fathers, the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. and my salvation of whom should I be afraid of whom should I be afraid the Lord is my light and my salvation of whom should I be afraid of whom should I be and my help, whom should I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, before whom should I shrink? The Lord is my light and my salvation, of whom should I be afraid? Of whom should I be afraid? There is one thing I ask of the Lord, for this I long, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom should I be afraid? Of whom should I be afraid? I believe I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hope in God and take heart. Hope in the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom should I be? A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, 
he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus, King of endless glory, Savior of the world, Savior of the world. Praise to you, Lord Jesus, King of endless glory, Savior of the world, Savior of the world. the living water that we never be thirsty again. Praise, Praise to, to you, you, Lord Jesus, King of endless glory, Savior of the world, Savior of the world. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever clings to their life loses it, and whoever rejects their life in this world will preserve it for life eternal. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour, but it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder, but others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. For now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. My grandfather was a very precise, exact man. Take, for instance, his garden. Like many immigrant men of his generation, my grandfather tended a large and beautiful garden, clear into his 80s. Even as he got older and all of that bending and kneeling and caring got to be difficult for him, he wasn't very much interested in my help. As I said, he was a very precise, exact man. And as hard as it is for you to believe, I wasn't real precise, and I was never too delicate and not very patient. In my grandfather's world, a garden was a very exact endeavor. He carefully measured the distance between each of his plants. He lined up everything by placing stakes at either end of each row, with string attached from stake to stake, in order to ensure that the row would be perfectly straight. He used a yardstick to measure the distance between each plant, and he also counted out the number of seeds he put into each hole. That is, after he had measured the depth of every hole he dug. None of this was I adept at, patient with, nor interested in. After everything was planted, 
I wasn't any better with hoe or watering can, catching as many plants as weeds and drowning some of those plants while leaving others parched. As much as I looked up to and admired my grandfather, as important as he was and always will be in my life, me getting anywhere near his garden would drive the poor man crazy. In our gospel this day, when Jesus speaks about that seed, that grain of wheat falling to the earth and dying, he is not just making an analogy concerning our last moments on earth. There is certainly an aspect of this gospel which references natural death, but this is not just once for all time falling to the earth and dying. Rather, Jesus is more importantly, much more importantly, speaking to our repeated attempts to die to self so that then the life of Jesus might be more and more apparent in our own lives. If the only time that we had to fall to the earth and die was that one final occasion that none of us can avoid, it really wouldn't be much of a challenge. No one escapes it. It comes to all. But if what Jesus is directing us toward in this gospel is a day-to-day -day dying, a process of letting go, letting go of what we want, what we think we need, what we believe to be important, letting go of all of our own issues so that God's love and God's concern and God's forgiveness might be more and more apparent in our lives, then we indeed face a much greater challenge, a challenge requiring far more patience and effort and hard work than my grandfather's garden ever called forth from me. Truly, this is not an easy or comfortable task. Giving up our own ways requires not just patience, but effort. It is so much easier to stay in our own worlds, concentrating on what we want, what we believe to be important, not giving in to what someone else may want, not giving over to others' needs, preferring, preferring instead to nursing our old wounds, cherishing our personal grudges, labeling as necessary any of our misdeeds, and keeping in mind first and foremost that which we decide is important. If, however, we work on being that seed that falls to the earth and dies, it is no longer our agenda that controls our actions, but rather our efforts at bringing to life the image of Jesus, becoming more and more that servant of whom Jesus speaks in our gospel. Without making any effort throughout the course of our lives to reflect the life of Jesus, it is, would be senseless then to expect at the end of that life we will be filled with the life of Jesus. Not once does that grain of wheat fall to the ground. Not once do we give our lives away. But again and again, that over and over, the life and love of Jesus might come through more and more clearly in our own lives, that more and more forcefully we might bring the image of Jesus into focus in our world as we try to become that seed that bears much fruit.
light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became a man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. As God's people, we offer our prayer. For our church, that the Pope, our bishops, priests, and all of God's people may be given strength to live their Christian lives more fully, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For civil authorities, may they govern with wisdom, honesty, and responsibility, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose hearts are experiencing despair, may they be consoled by God's peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Spirit to cleanse our hearts, and give us steadfast spirits for the final weeks of our Lenten journey, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Paula Higgins, whom we remember in this Mass, and for Lois Bova, Sophia De Luca, and Francis Yeager, who were buried this week, may all the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs we hold within our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. Gracious God, in your love and compassion, hear and answer these prayers. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. which earth is given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed, and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all of your faithful people. Remember also our sisters and brothers, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Apostles, St. Charles Borromeo, and all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may dare to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
honor by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await our blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to thank all of you for coming to celebrate with us this beautiful morning, especially those who ministered for us at our Mass today. Special greetings to anyone who might be visiting with us at St. Charles this weekend. Next weekend, we will have Mass in the Social Hall at 4 p.m. on Saturday. Mass in the church and in the social hall at 4 p.m. And Mass in the church and in the social hall at 11 a.m. For Palm Sunday, we will have Mass in the church and the social hall at 4 p.m. on Saturday and at 11 a.m. on Sunday. The church will then remain open until 3 p.m. after Masses have concluded for anyone who would like to come and pick up less Palm. Hope everyone has a good week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.